So we just bought a big man chair for my husband. He, uh, I don't know if I've said this before, but he's 6'8 and um, as close to 400 pounds as he's ever been. <laughs> and he's a very big man. So he needed a, a good chair. And we've been talking about buying a big man chair for years. Well, we finally did it and we got it delivered today. So follow me as I go and sit in it. Uh, this is it. Wait a minute. I'm going to turn the camera around. Let's see. I can't figure out how to do that, so never mind. I'm going to put a picture in the video, but watch what happens when I sit in it. It's this brown fabric. But look at my feet. Can't touch the floor. <laughs> no matter how I bend my feet, they're just swinging back and forth just like a little kid. I feel like Lily Tomlin, and I don't remember her name, but I'll figure it out with the big red chair. Or was it Blue's Clues? Was there a Blue's Clues with a big chair or a big purple chair? Or maybe that was another kid's show. I'm rambling right now. I'm just rambling. Booktube. This is Kim at Middle of the Book March, and this is my bookish week for Saturday, June 25th. Now, there's been so much going on over here. If you've paid attention to my videos, my daughter's second baby shower is today. So when you're watching this, I will have filmed it on Friday, which I normally do. And I'll be running around doing last minute things necessary for her shower. So I will... Um, be done Saturday night and probably end up laying down, sleeping the uh, baby shower hangover off because I'll be exhausted. So what am I going to talk about today? I actually have a pretty big book week. So I finished four books last week and let me talk to you about them before this video gets too long. And I've also, you know, had my little plant, um, my plant footage in there and my chair footage, and it was pretty funny, that chair. It's so comfortable, but if I extend it all the way out, it's like a bed for me. <laughs> it, it won't be for my husband, but for me, it's like a bed. Uh, super comfy, so that just came in. What did I finish last week? Okay, this one, um, Why I Can't Read Wallace Stegner and Other Essays, A Tribal Voice by Elizabeth Cook Lynn. This is an essay collection, and I read the title essay, Why I Can't Read Wallace Stegner. And I also read um, several other essays, and then I kind of surveyed the rest of them. This, this particular essay has nothing to do with the Wallace Stegner um, controversy that I made a video about. This is about her not being able to read him at all, any of his work because of what she feels like is his appropriation of native culture in the United States. Now, Wallace Stegner wrote in the 60s and 70s, and he kind of took over native culture and fictionalized the Wild West, the West. Um, he did write nonfiction as well. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of writing from his that she just um, couldn't stomach because she felt like he was misappropriating and inaccurately portraying uh, native cultures in the West. And his own background, he did grow up a little bit in Canada and in California and in other states in the West. But she doesn't talk at all about his, his book, Angle of Repose. She's talking about him as a general author. And because of his status as a literary giant, she had a lot to say about that. And I really appreciated her perspective her expertise and her own background because she is an indigenous woman, indigenous author. She's also a professor, a philosopher. And I read several other of these essays and this it's quite dated because a lot, she does several book reviews. 
and she's reviewing books written by people who have since been discovered to either be criminals engaging in criminal behavior or blatant misogynists. So the book is, is a little dated. Um, this was published in, I always can't get the pages, 1996. So this is a 26 year old book, collection of essays. Um, it's highly academic. It's not that readable for uh, a normal person like me or a lay reader to read this and enjoy it. It's not that type of a collection. So I will probably go through a few of her other essays. She has a lot to say about women um, in the West. And so I'll take a look at those. But that the Wallace Stegner essay was good. And I was glad that I read it. I also finished... Um, Country Girls by Edna O'Brien. Did I already talk about this? I don't think I did. <laughs> I don't remember. Okay, I'm going to edit this out if I go back and look, but I'm going to talk about Country Girls. Uh, this is the first in a trilogy from Edna O'Brien, and I posted on Wednesday my Irish Women Author Project with Britta Bowler. So Britta and I, as a buddy read, read the Country Girls, um, Country Girls, which is the first in the trilogy. And we both really enjoyed it. It was very clearly a first novel, and um, it is the story of Kathleen, Kathleen Brady and Baba Brennan, who are childhood friends, um, antagonistic friends, but they end up growing to love each other and um, be best friends. And when they are both of age 18, they leave their repressive Irish village for Dublin. But this is basically a coming of age story for these two young women and how they needed and wanted to leave their their small repressive Irish village. Um, it's, it's obviously a first novel and it ends very abruptly, but we both really enjoy Edna O'Brien's writing and we will definitely continue with the other two books in the trilogy. Probably not right away, but I, I am assuming they'll both be part of our Irish women reading project. What else? Okay. I finished The Nature of Small Birds by Susie Finkbeiner, and this author contacted me over um, my last booktube video where I hauled this book, and so we've actually been talking back and forth. And very quickly, I hope to do a Zoom chat with her. If that doesn't happen, then we've just had a great trail of messages and correspondence back and forth. It's been lovely to be in contact with her, and I really enjoyed this book. This was very unassuming and thoughtful and tender and it was a very emotional family story it's it's comes from the perspective of three different characters and three different times in history the 70s the 80s and 2013 a family story about a couple who have one biological daughter and they have the opportunity to adopt a four-year-old girl from vietnam after the vietnam war and at the time, I had no idea, but Vietnamese children were airlifted out of the country after the war and basically sent to Western homes for adoption. And so they brought this young Vietnamese girl into their home to be their adopted daughter. And the entire book is the main, the main, well, the main character protagonist is the father. And he's talking about his family from a father's perspective. And they end up having three daughters, two biological and one adopted. So three daughters total. And he's coming from the perspective of a tender, emotional, very kind-hearted, um, warm father of girls. And then the, the perspective in the 70s is from his wife, Linda, and her experiences as a mother and what she thinks of her family and her girls and her husband. They have a very loving small family and it's those types of uh, little snapshots of the past and their family. And then the middle story in the 80s is from the oldest daughter, Sunny. Now, Mindy is the young girl who was adopted from Vietnam and it, because of the, the flashbacks going back and forth, we hear how she feels about being adopted and being a young Asian girl in the 70s in a white family. So there's some, you know, there's that conflict there in the comparison between being kind of pulled out of your culture and planted in a Western home that's very American and very white in a very white neighborhood. Um, so that was a really interesting perspective. 
We hear that she may want to try to find her birth mother and her birth family. Um, and this is just a very sweet family story. It's, it's actually a Christian novel, and I did not know that when I hauled it. Um, but it's not aggressively proselytizing in the Christian faith. This family happens to be um, a Christian family who believes in God and is very open in the text about talking about that as it applies to them. The book is not preachy. It's not luxury, if that is a word. And so it was a, it was a very warm-hearted perspective of their family and where they get their strength from. So this was a very sweet book. The Small Birds has to do with their children and how every child eventually flies the nest. So um, very sweet. And I am I will have a video if I can coordinate this with the author, who is extremely um, gracious and uh, so easy to talk to. So I hope to have that in the future. I also just finished A Lost Lady by Willa Cather. Um, this is the story of Marion Forrester and her older husband, Daniel. Daniel was, was working in the railroad industry and he kind of um, was part of what advanced it to the Western states. And this is coming from the area of Nebraska and Colorado and Marion is from California. And this is the story of the kind of them at the turn of the century, uh, the kind of the tapering off of the Wild West culture and also the kind of the demise of their livelihoods, uh, their, their marriage in somewhat of a kind of an offshoot of that, um, their health, their fortunes, and kind of it's the opposite of the American dream. It talks about, you know, what happens when you're investing in stocks and bonds and banking and things go south, things go sour. We have the perspective of Neil, who is a young boy when we first meet him. And he and a group of young friends kind of roam the woods on the forest or uh, land and they like to go fishing and they like to go swimming. And we kind of see him as he gets a little bit older into being a teenager, 19, 20 years old, and his relationship with Mrs. Forrester. There's, there's nothing uh, sexual or inappropriate that happens, but he becomes friendly enough with her that she becomes very honest and kind of he's, he commiserates with her and he becomes part of their family. But one of the, one of the things that strikes me about this book is the, the way that Neil looks at Mrs. Forrester. He, at first in the book, he idolizes her. He sets her on a pedestal and her husband is deeply in love with her, even though he's 25 years older. And he, she is his second wife and she was very young when they met. He saved her life and she felt kind of obligated to him, but also thought he was a very nice, loving man. And so we see the dynamics of they don't have a lot in common, but they really do appreciate each other. And Neil takes his perspective of Mrs. Forrester from her husband. Um, and things start to change in the novel. Uh, Mr. Forrester becomes ill and all of those relationships become much more clear, much more realistic. And it's a very interesting change in the personal perspectives of each of them. So I really enjoyed that book. Um, I keep reminding myself to think about the time when that was published because there is some problematic context as far as how Willa Cather writes Black Americans, Indigenous Americans, or Indigenous people. Um, so there are times in the story where it was a, a halt for me when she would say a, write a certain word or use certain phrases to describe these other characters. And uh, just going in, it's something to know in advance. But I do love her writing. Um, I finished a book on my Kindle called The Romantic Agenda by Claire Kahn, or Can, K-A-N-N. -N. This was such a sweet book. The, the protagonist is an asexual young woman named Joy. Her best friend is an asexual young man named Malcolm. And asexuality happens on a spectrum. So they're at, they're at different places on the spectrum, but they understand each other. And it follows their, um, their processes as they meet people, if they're going to 
get into a romantic relationship? Are they going to get into sexual relationships? What asexuality means to them? And the book is exceptional at talking about that, at talking about each of the characters' differences and how they deeply understand each other. They are so tight as best friends that it's very difficult for them to have outside relationships. And it's very difficult for Joy, at least, who has always thought she's been in love with Malcolm for many years since they were in college, very very hard for her to think about separating from him to find somebody for herself. They do manage to find other characters. Joy finds a man named Fox, who is the ex-boyfriend and best friend of Summer, who gets into a relationship with Malcolm. This was just sweet and helpful to understand and a lovely romance. There was not any steamy context in the book. It kind of led up to that. There were some moments of anticipation and working through relationship questions and questions of sexual relationships. But this was such an, a, a refreshing and fun romance, contemporary romance to read with asexual characters. And I really liked it. I really enjoyed that book. I think those are the four that I finished. I finished four books last week. I, I was on a roll. I was on fire last week most of the time because I did DNF a book. This was actually a reread for me. And this is The Hotel New Hampshire by John Irving. I read this many, many years ago. And at the time, um, thought I really enjoyed it. This is the book after World According to Garp from John Irving. This book was published a long time ago. It was published in, oh, 1981. So this is a 41-year-old novel. This was interesting because I read this or, or attempted to read this for my in real life book group, The Critical Chicks, and we're having our meeting tonight. I'm filming this on Friday. Um, I read 50% of the book and I just could not do it anymore. John Irving's novels are filled with extremely idiosyncratic, quirky, odd characters. And it got to the point where it's just, they're just too weird. There's no realism here whatsoever. And he tends to put a lot of the same types of themes in many or most of his novels. Bears, um, New Hampshire, Vienna, uh, some sort of dysfunctional sexual relationship. They're all in his novels. And there's a very strong storyline that contains stories of rape and sexual abuse. Um, all That's fine, I understand, but... This novel does not age well, and the way he writes about rape and the way he writes about sexual trauma is problematic. And it, it, there's so many characters that are dealing with these types of events that each one of them, the way they're dealing with it is a very unrealistic way and a very odd attitudes surrounding it. Um, their relationships are a complete hot mess. There's an incest storyline that runs through the entire novel. So this was too weird for me for a second reading. And I admitted to myself that I really did not like this book. I don't know what I was... I was much, much younger when I first read it. And I think I liked it so much because of the author, not because of the book. And I put this down at 50%, and I, I won't go back to that one. So... What now? Um, I've got three books on the go. Uh, let's see. I have Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. This is a series of essays and speeches. A little tiny bit of poetry, but mostly it's essays, speeches, a little bit of memoir material. Um, I'm probably going to finish that this weekend. And I started When My Brother Was an Aztec by Natalie Diaz. This is a poetry collection by an indigenous author. Um, just started this, and I don't usually do well with poetry. It's not my favorite genre. I'm honestly loving this so far. So, and let's see. There was another one. Oh, I just started the audiobook of, um, gosh, what is it? It is... Abby Wambach's memoir, um, Forward. And I picked this up because I had kept seeing this recommended to me 
probably because I've been picking up quite a few books uh, for Pride Month. And I read a lot of books uh, written by LGBTQ plus authors anyway, or with content. So this kept coming up for me as recommendations. And I'm not a sports memoir fan, but this is not just a sports memoir. This is her life memoir, how she came out, what her relationships were like, how she developed a coming of age memoir. Uh, she's one of many children in a Catholic family what happened when she did come out to her family, her relationship with her mother. So, so far I'm really enjoying that audiobook and she does narrate it. I am about to start uh, The Gods of Tango by Carolina de Robertis. And this is going to be a buddy read with um, Sherry Hart, who is a viewer and a wonderful commenter. Um, she's, I've, seen her on in my comments on my channel since I started booktube. She's a wonderful friend to many booktubers so she and I are going to buddy read this and I've talked about this before for my um, June TBR. This is set in 1913 with 17 year old Lita. She's got um, her father's violin and she leaves her small Italian village for a new home in Argentina. And there's a, a musical storyline. There is a lesbian storyline. And I'm really looking forward to this. And I had said this before. I found this at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. A dollar. So yes, that's what I read. That's what I have on the go. I wanted to show you two books. My, my book hauling is slowing down. And I, the only open orders I have out there are two um, classics that I ordered. I'm not gonna, they're editions. One of them is an edition of a book I already have. And the other one is a book that I will be reading in the future for a book project. So I'm not gonna really show you those, but I did haul two books that I really do wanna show you. Um, this one, the Wim Women's Prize winner, Ruth Ozeki, The Book of Form and Emptiness. I uh, got it in paperback because in hardcover, it is a brick. So I, I was very happy when this came in. I will read that, I don't know when, but I'm really looking forward to that one. And I found this um, in the UK, on the UK publisher's websites. So this is not published in the US yet. This is Bravehearted by Katie Hickman, The Dramatic Story of Women in the American West. Katie Hickman is a British author, and she is a prolific author of um, nonfiction. She, let's see, she's written historical novels, and she lives in London. But she wrote a book about women in the American West. Why wouldn't I buy this? So I just got this the other day as well. And I would love to get to this during June on the Range, but I, I doubt that I will. But I was really happy to um, receive this. There's all kinds of excellent photos in the middle of the book. I love when books have photos. And this is not just a book about um, white pioneer women. This is a book about slaves who were brought to the West, about indigenous people who were um, displaced by explorers and pioneers of the West. So really interesting stuff. And I would love to get, dive into that one. That is it for me. This was a long one, I think. Not Hopefully not too bad. Thank you so much for watching. Write a comment down below. Tell me what you think of anything I said, any of the books I showed you, my big giant chair that my husband will probably always have for himself, which he deserves because he needs it. It's actually called The Beast. <laughs> so thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next video. Bye.